with their minds that it's just an efficiency cut, it's just efficiency and it'll have no impact. The Murdoch press is going to carpet bomb us with the same message. But what you've just heard from a person who <coughs> lived his life, made his career, the front end of news, is the true cost of those cuts. It's not an efficiency. It's an absolute attack on the quality of the news that we get to see, the scope of the news that we get to see. And because it's an attack on our news, it's an attack on our democracy. That's what it is. Yeah. So every single time you see somebody from this government or one of their supporters from the Murdoch press shot out the efficiency line, think about what you just heard, the long catalogue there of impacts from Quentin. And I should say, in passing, acknowledge that Quentin has been a tireless and fearless advocate for the ABC. More than just news, it's also culture. So what I want to do now is, let's have a talk about culture. Let's bring up Jeff Burrell. Hello friends, how are we? Angry! And rightly so. Excuse me uh, uh, if I sniffle or cough a little during this, I have a dreadful summer cold. But nothing would stop me coming here today. This is not just about jobs in the sector of the people who I represent, the people who entertain and inform. But as Quentin said, this is an insult to every single Australian taxpayer. Yeah. Now, quite apart from the lie that Tony Abbott told on election eve, I want to tell you a small story. Some of you are probably aware of it, reported in the Fairfax media in the early days of the Conservative government. cock a -hoop they were at their first party meeting, mourning the loss of Sophie Mirabella. <laughs> and she don't really miss her voice in the public debate. So amongst a lot of jocularity and laughing, there was a suggestion, let's get Sophie Mirabella to head the ABC. Oh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the disdain with which this government treats our public broadcaster and the people of Australia. Yeah. Now, I'm here today to represent, obviously, people, a group of people who are going to be very challenged. There is a lot of job losses, and I will talk about that a little later. I believe this is far more important than job losses. This is about something that is a point of difference for our culture in the world. It is the envy of the world to have a public broadcaster of this stature, of this quality, that it is the height of insult to imagine that through vested interests it would be destroyed by these barbarians at the gate. Now, we heard about the $254 million cut to the ABC. In the area of drama, let me tell you, the, the figure is closer to $800 million. The foresight of the previous Labor, Labor government, and now the ABC, with a one-off budgetary grant to tell unique and challenging and powerful Australian stories. That money has resulted in shows like Redfern Now, The Slap, the Jack Irony Show, the Moody Christmas. That is the tip of the iceberg. And make no mistake, these cuts will mean programs disappear or a change. And for me, it's not just these programs that we have seen, which is why this is so important. It's the programs we have not seen. It is the programs now that will never, ever get to develop the stage. Redfern now will not be made in the current environment. And let me say, Tony Abbott is Minister for um, Aboriginal and Indigenous Affairs, I believe. <laughs> Responsible for cuts to a host of Indigenous organisations, including the Deadly Awards. Now, the Deadly Awards were formed to give young Indigenous Australians the hope and belief that they could participate in this modern Australian world, to give role models. The ABC single-handedly is a beacon in this world, in the last five years, have actually created 
television shows, an Indigenous production unit that has given young Indigenous Australian performers the belief and the hope that they have a future. So this is not just about jobs. It's not about my job. I was recently blessed to take part in an historic production with the ABC too. Totally Indigenous scripted, all key personnel Indigenous Australians on ABC Two. Now if our friend Malcolm Turnbull had his way, ABC Two will be nothing more than a resource library. I doubt that Channel Nine will take up the mantle of Indigenous representation and diversity on our screens. And that is why this is not about my job, it is not about the jobs of the people who I represent, as important as they are. It is about the future. It is about the future of public broadcasting. Now in America, in 1948, the government decided, yes, we will support this new technology in broadcasting. We will let you build all these towers, build all these wires, on the proviso that it is only used for commercial services, for commercial purposes, as an adjunct to the American capitalist structure. Now that's fair enough, they can do that. But I think we as Australians are proud that that is our point of difference. That we do have checks and balances. That we have stories that the commercial networks wouldn't go near. And the only ones brave enough to take on those stories are the ABC. It's a fairly well-known fact, I'm going back 10 years now, a show called Sea Change. Which actually revolutionised the landscape. Previous to that, it was pretty much cops, doctors, nurses, etc. And we certainly returned a little to that. But at the time, the producers of this groundbreaking show went to every single commercial network and was rejected. The only people who would make sea change for the ABC, and that is the future we are looking at. Who will these people turn to to tell their stories? Their stories will not be told. So, ladies and gentlemen, in summary, it is essential that we have a national broadcaster that has Australian faces on the screen, that tells Australian stories, that tells stories that would not be told otherwise. No ifs, no buts, no ABC cuts. Thank you.